All right, welcome back to another video. Today I'm actually going to be comparing uh, Hyperland, Neri, and Mango WC. Two of, I guess, the most uh, sought out Wayland compositors that are out there right now. Uh, I guess the most popular, we'll, we'll say that. So Hyperland, been around the longest, and then Neri, and then uh, Mango is kind of, you know, new to the scene. So Hyperland is, you know, 100% independent dynamic tiling window compositor. It doesn't sacrifice, you know, on looks, um, very hus highly customizable, has a ton of features as far as like different ways of, you know, configuring it and uh, making it your own. It's like a rising dreamland, <laughs> if you will. So a lot of eye candy, a lot of different animations, blurs, like uh, w whatever you want, you pretty much have it here on um, Hyperland. One nice thing, it is 100% um, independent, so you don't rely on any other compositor uh, uh, portals or anything, so it does use its own, so a lot of the times it is pretty, you know, stable in, in that regard in, in, in different aspects for, you know, having your compositor, you know, kind of working like out of the box. Um, it does have a plugin manager that you can use uh, with different plugins like um, Hyper Scrolling to have kind of like the Neary like scrolling features. And then, but this one does by default just have tiling, floating, and full screen windows. So that, that's kind of the, the main aspect of, you know, Hyperland. It's just a tiling, a dynamic tiling uh, window manager. And you can really make it, you know, look exactly the way like you want it to and have it configured, you know, exactly the way you want it to as well. Where Neary is a uh, scrolling a window manager. So as you can see here, these windows are, you know, scrolling to the left and right instead of having them, you know, tile as you, you spawn a new window. Um, so this will not resize a new window. I am on Neary on, uh, as I'm recording this video right now. So if I spawn a new window, which is a terminal, you see how it pushed out this window and now they are scrolling. So that's how, you know, Neary works there. It is a scrolling window manager. So everything kind of just pushes out to the right, which I actually have been enjoying. I like the scrolling aspect of it instead of the tiling because it it does not resize any of my current windows. So I do like that aspect of it. But um, I can see where, you know, Hyperland with the dynamic tiling does make sense for some workflows. So it, all of these really just depend on, you know, your needs and, and what you want to configure about it. Um, but some nice things that uh, uh, Neary does have to offer um, it is using dynamic workspace workspaces, so it's like GNOME where a new workspace is spawned as you add new um, items. So if I add another terminal here, now I have a fourth one um, available, and so it's dynamic. So if I get rid of those, now the fourth one is gone because um, I don't have anything on that third window. So it does have dynamic tiling for that. This is some pretty good, um, you know, touchpad and, and mouse gestures, which is nice. Um, one really nice feature is the overview option that it has. Um, so if you go into overview, you'll see that it you know, shows all of my windows in this overview view. Um, so if I had things actually scrolling, it would actually show that as well. And this is a fully, you know, usable space here. So I can actually, you know, still move through all of my windows um, while in the overview. So I can find everything that I need and still use all your key bindings while in the overview. So for that reason, I really like it. And uh, it, it kind of just gives you a, a good feel. It's one of the nicer overviews um, that I've seen an actual, you know, uh, compositor to use. So, so yeah. So, and then also has a built-in screenshot tool, which I really like that because a lot of these you have to, you know, configure your own, you know, screenshot tool, you know, from either, you know, Grim and, you know, Slurp or uh flame shot or whatever you're using for your uh, screenshot tool when there's different ones for like you know x11 screenshot tools but this one just has it built in which is it's just a really nice feature to not have to you know configure one more thing <laughs> now this one does not have its own independent uh, portal so you do have to use the um, xcg uh, gnome portal um, for screencasting so that is uh, the portal that they are using for you know anything like that so you will have to you know configure that and have that set up a lot of default Dot files that you find will have that set up already, you know, already for you. So you don't have to worry about it too much, but you can run into, you know, some issues here and there. You can still do, you know, gaps, borders in different window sizes. Blur is coming to um, Neary, but it's not um, available now, but it does have a lot of the animations and borders and all the shadows and things like that that you can configure as you can see within, you know, my uh, uh, desktop here now. So yeah, so that's Neary. And then Mango WC um, is kind of, a mixture of the both of them. <laughs> so Mango WC is actually based on um, DWL. So that's DWM if you're familiar with that. So it is based on that. So this one is going to be using a different compositor. Um, it has excellent um, X Wayland support, um, you know, out of the box, which is really nice to have kind of, you know, built into the system. So you don't have to worry about configuring that yourself. 
But Mango actually has the ability to have uh, both um, tiling and scrolling. So you can actually switch between scrolling and tiling at any point in time, uh, kind of just at will with a key binding. Or you can have certain monitors have um, different uh, layouts where you want you know scrolling on your main monitor and then you know tiling on a different monitor. Um, or even uh, based on their tag system, which is like their workspaces, you can actually have you know multiple different ones uh, per uh, workspace as well. So, so yeah, so Mango is kind of like the best of both worlds uh, when it comes to that. So it's going to have all the different options as far as you know theming and stuff, the blur and animations and uh, borders and everything are you know visible here as well. It does have its own overview. It, it kind of just shrinks all the windows um, onto your screen, so you can see them all at once. No matter what, if they're on you know different um, workspaces or tags, it, it'll shrink them all down. You can see everything that you have open. Um, so I do like these overview features that they have you know and in, in enabled um, into the actual you know Wayland uh, compositors themselves, which is a, a really nice touch to have things kind of built in that you don't have to you know configure things or add different um, aspects that you want. Uh, but you can still do that if you want to, like just like Hyperlens kind of like build, you know, from the ground up type deal. You can use any kind of uh, different things to build on top of your system um, that you want. These kind of have some of the actual things, you know, built into it, which is which is a nice touch. So as far as like configuring these, they're all just a little bit different. So here you can see um, Hyperland. So with Hyperland, you have what's called a hyperland.conf. So you can source these things out. Um, as you can see, this one is, is, is being sourced out to the different configurations. So this one sources all the config files into um, config.d. So then you can see um, you have general, you know, decorations, animations, um, all the things, binds, cursor, uh, monitor. You don't have to go as intense of this. This is um, the Archcraft uh, configuration. You can have everything in one config file, hyperland.conf, or you can source out just a couple for monitor and like, you know, animations or something. You don't have to go as crazy as what this one is doing here. So, you know, that's kind of how you configure that. And you would go in, like, if you want to go into key bindings, it uses uh, this uh, syntax here. So bind equals, you know, super and then whatever the command that you want to do, you know, plus exec, and then the actual command um, that it, that's followed. This is using some um, some links um, here for um, alacrity. So up here it shows, you know, what you want that to be. So alacrity is running uh, through here, and then like for files, I can change my file if I want this to be Nemo or whatever. I can change Thunar uh, to Nemo, and then it updates any key binding that I use this tag with for files to automatically update to that. So. Um, you can do different things like that, make things you know a little bit easier for you um, within your uh, configuration there. So you know that's kind of how you know Hyperland is configured. And then as far as Mango and Neri, if you go over here, you can see that um, I have Mango um, in my configuration over here. So this one you can source out um, as well. So if I go into the uh, the main configuration here, you can see um, sub config load, and then it's it's sourcing out just kind of the same way that. Um, the hyperland one was so you can source out to bind rule and inv and uh, so if i go under bind here these are all the key binds and this is very similar to the way that hyperland um does their key binds except that i guess the biggest difference is it don't have the exact uh, syntax in there um it is just commas in between each one and then you can spawn your you know whatever that you want that window or, or that uh that app to be spawned you know after that so it's super b and then spawn instead of exact and then you got the the action that that follows. I mean, you can still do scripts and everything um, within there as well. And then, as far as actually configuring, you know, all of your you know theming and all that, you have you know your window rules, um, just like you can have in Hyperland as well. And then you have the environment uh, variables here, so you don't have to do all these separately. You can put these all into one config um, as well, just like you can within Hyper. So it's really just up to you how you want to configure that. As far as Neri goes, they actually use KDL as their syntax, so it's uh, config.kdl is your actual uh, configuration file. So on here, um, I'm actually not sure if you can source out. I've never actually tried to source um, anything out in Neri. Um, everything is just in the one file and most you know dot files that I've seen with Neri, it is just one file. So I'm not sure if you can or not, but uh, for the most part, it's just you know your one file, you know setting your monitors and um, setting everything. One thing I will say about Neri's configuration by default, they have some great commenting um, in here to actually know what's what. Um, all these comments are not you know stuff that I've added, but a lot of these are that you know just by default are comments within the system. Um, so all these these are all here previously. I did not add any of these uh, configurations there. So um, it's really nice to just have that. So as you're scrolling through and trying to figure out what you're doing, um, they have some you know 
documentation like right in the configuration itself. So it's, it's easier to kind of understand and get used to what's going on rather than kind of just jumping into a configuration and like, okay, what am I doing here? <laughs> if you're not familiar. So I definitely would say in the area is a little bit uh, easier in that regard um, as far as configuring it. But you could still do, you know, window rules and then your spawn at startup. So your startup um, options. And then as far as, you know, spawning windows, it's a little bit different. Um, so basically, um, you do mod plus whatever the actual key binding that you wanted to do. And then in brackets, you would have spawn and then the actual action. And you do have to um, divide the actions into uh, quotations if you do have multiple. But if I'm just spawning telegram, then it's just the one um, action there, spawn that application. So, so they are, you know, fairly different, um, but, you know, not too different. If you kind of learn one, it's pretty easy to um, learn the rest of them. Um, they're not, you know, too far off. They're just the syntax and how things are laid out um, is what is going to be the, the biggest difference between them all. But yeah, so that's kind of the differences, you know, between all three. Let me know in the comments below which one you guys use and which one you might want to use if you're new to it. And if you have any questions, definitely drop those in the comments. You can join my Discord as well. We can help you out there. Um, but if you enjoy my content, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.